Okay, so now we get to a very important part of the show where you get to ask a drag queen a question. Anything that's on your mind, you can feel free to ask me. I will answer up to four questions. So, don't be shy. Raise your hand and we'll make it happen. Anyone? No one ever wants to be first. Right here, right here, right here. Okay. I can't see so, okay, so right here? Okay, yes. Tell us your name. And then your question. Eddie Cruz. Eddie Cruz, and your question? At what age did you start doing drag? At what age did I start doing drag? <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> I guess I was considered a late bloomer because I kind of waited until I was 21. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I, and, and, you know I, in high school, I was just, in the 11th and 12th grade, I was just finding myself, you know, and just basically coming to terms with my sexuality. And I started to, uh, at that time, I started to visit the village, you know? And, um, and so in 12th grade, my friends and I, all, uh, all my three friends, we all had drag names. You know, we all gave ourselves drag names. And my name was Macadamia Serendipity. <laughs> I like macadamia nuts, and so I was like, ooh, okay, but thinking far ahead, I was like, that would be a lot to put on the billboard. They probably would have to get extra letters and stuff. And so um, I changed it to Tequila Sunrise, and then I, you know, to this day, I still can't remember how it changed from Tequila Sunrise to Harmonica Sunbeam, but that was the, that's the only name I've ever used is Harmonica Sunbeam, officially when I first did drag, and the first time I ever did drag was, I, I, when I, like I said, when I came out, I came out and I, I found the West Village and I found the ballroom community, aka Paris is Burning, aka Pose, aka My House, familiar, yes, ring bells, okay. So I became a part of a house and I, the first time I ever did drag was at a, um, a ball at Tracks. I don't know if you remember Tracks on yes. 17th, 18th, or 19th Street, something like that. 18th. 19th Street. 18th. I, I just know it was 19. sketchy. 19th. And so, um, <laughs> but we went. And so, um, and Paris Dupree, Paris from Paris is Burning, she has a category called Butch Queen, first time in drags at a ball. And I walked, my house members put me together. I didn't know what I was going to look like. I trusted them. I did hair, makeup, clothes. All I had to do was go out there and sell it. And sell it, I did. And to this day, there are still bitches that are bitter. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> Anyone else? Yes, sir? Miguel from Queens. Okay, all right. I'm from two parents, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, coming, like you said, coming from that scene with the houses and all that, how do you feel about Pose? Do you think it's accurate? Well, it's not supposed to be accurate. It's supposed to be because if you tell too many of somebody's personal story, then you can have some problems. And then it would seem like uh, exploitation just a little bit because a lot of people that were there are no longer here. So to kind of like just say, oh yeah, I'm going to tell somebody's story, you really can't do that. We can skirt around it and put small things in and then you also have to make things for TV. Look at the show Pose and look at the pier, how they did to pick the pier. Yeah. Did you know how much change they would have to do to the pier to make it look like how when we went? Okay. Right. You know, do you know how many rats they would have to pull out from the subway? <laughs> The rats were fierce, honey. One day I was I played hooky from school. I was sitting out there doing homework. Now I played hooky to go to the village to do homework, right? So I'm sitting out there doing homework, honey, and a rat walked up and asked me for change of a dollar, honey. They were very bold, honey. I mean, this was during the daytime, honey. So you know at night they was jumping people. So, um, <laughs> 
So yeah, so you know, there, there's some, you know, you know, and you want to leave a little bit of mystery and stuff like that, but I think you can't really fully tell it accurately because there's too many personalities and too many entities involved to actually do it like that. So they can tell it from their perspective and from what they want the audience to see. And of course, it's got to be made for TV, you know? Next question. Yes, in the back, I see a hand up, unless yes. somebody's doing yoga. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Drew from Brooklyn. Oh, yeah. Well, I am um, Drew from Jersey, but go ahead. <laughs> I'd like to know whatever happened to Sheila Noxima. Yeah. 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 Sheila Noxima, the supermodel from Secaucus, that's my niece, you know, for those of you who don't know. And currently she is living in Afghanistan with a very... <laughs> I mean, that's according to the last postcard I got. But she is living in Afghanistan with a very rich prince there. And things are going quite well. And she says the sex is the bomb. Um, <laughs> next question. Yes. What message would you give, advice rather, you give to any future drag queen? What advice would I give to any future drag queens? I would say be ready to take a lot of criticism. And, and you know, and you can detect criticism from actual shade. So be ready for the shade, but also be ready to be open to criticism. Don't believe everything you see on RuPaul's Drag Race because it's a TV show and they edit it the way they want to edit it. Also, a lot of people believe that, you know, especially a lot of the younger people coming up, they don't believe that you are anybody unless you have actually been on the show. You know what I'm saying? But before that show, there were many of us doing the legwork and the groundwork and making our names known. So, the original. so don't let these microwave queens fool you, honey. Is, bitch, I've been in the crock pot for years. <laughs> so yeah, that, that is the advice that I would give, you know? Uh, and one last question. Yes. Miss performing at Two Potato? Yes. Well, I don't miss performing at any place that's no longer there. <laughs> you miss that energy. You miss the you miss the the feeling you got when you were there. You know, and you know, even though the, the building is still there, you know, the, we will never get back those memories and those times. You know, and you just have to savor in the moment and we move on and we keep that as a big part of us. Two Potato was the first place I ever performed at in New York City. I started uh, performing in Jersey at a place called First Choice, for anyone who may know of that place. And, uh, and I then went to Two Potato and I started working at Two Potato. So all these old places, because a lot of people always say when they see me, they always tell me they know me for two, from two places. Either they say they know me from Two Potato or they know me from Escalita, you know? And then there's a third group that knows me from Craigslist. But anyway. <laughs> So, you know, so those places always hold a dear part of my life. Would I like to go back to that time? No. But it was a wonderful time, and I have many precious memories from it. All right. The one, first four one, questions one, were free. One more question. I said the first four questions. <laughs> no, I will, I will take one more. One more, one more. I sound like the girl at the buffet. I will take... <laughs> yeah, okay, and wait, okay, wait, so there's somebody in the back? Yes. Okay, so I'm going to take the back, and then I'll take you, sir, okay? You'll be the last one, okay? So the guy in the back, your name and where you're from? All right, I'm DJ Tony Cortez. This is legendary James Saunders mm -hmm. and legendary Calvin Smith. We want to you want a hug? Oh. Yeah, that requires walking. Yeah. <laughs> I'll do it, honey. <laughs> you will get your hug. <laughs> hey, how you doing? How you doing? Well, you ain't got to pay me for a hug, but you can put it right there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this feels like, you know, second service. Okay. Glad to be in the number one more time. One more time. <laughs>
<laughs> All right. So, sir, you have the last question. Yes. Yeah. So you've mentioned your name, <laughs> Jose. Okay. So you've mentioned all these places uh, dating back in time. You were there. Don't do it. <laughs> so, see, so see, why'd you have to go there? I was, uh, was going to ask you. Uh -huh. You look fabulous. What's your secret? Ooh. Oh, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I think my secret is to just enjoy life That's you know what I mean right. try to avoid the drama as yes. much as you can yes. stay away from the negative people honey log on Facebook every other week <laughs> but no it's just you just you, you know we get one chance at life and we got to make it our best life and if you live your life with positivity and hope Things happen. Yeah. Things happen. Yeah. Good things happen. You know. Yeah. I mean, you know, my life ain't perfect, honey. But you know what? I'm living my best life. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let the doors of the church open. And <laughs> Bring the girls out for one last curtain call and maestro. 